In this episode, we stay above the ground for three days, we inspect the mast and are almost ready for our transit. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart and here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33-foot sailboat, Tranquility. The last time we got our admeasurement to transit through the Panama Channel, became line handlers and started the preparations. We are uh, hold out right now. We are getting back on the hard to get a few jobs done. Um, for our channel crossing and especially for our next destination. So every time it's a little bit different when they haul out. Uh, in this case they have got a, a diver to check if the straps are on the right place uh, underneath the boat. So that's, uh, that's funny because we do have uh, markings where to put the straps but these are very very wide so Maybe this is even better. And uh, yeah, we're going to get lifted out. We need a really, really clean hole. So at least we do some paint jobs uh, for the hole and the propeller. Once again, the uh, entire cockpit is a mess because um, steering issues. Remember that time in Lagos where we did uh, um, a revisioning of the steering system? Uh, one of the bushings was broken uh, or was play on the bushing and they made a new bushing. So they replaced the bushing and put the steering pedestal back together again. And then remembering Curacao that we lost our steering because we thought and that was actually true, the nut on top wasn't tightened enough, so we put Loctite in it and tightened it again. But then, yeah, we didn't film that one uh, in Samblas, suddenly we got into reverse and the uh, rudder um, slammed into its uh, lock. And then all of a sudden we didn't have steering as well. So I opened up again, tightened everything down, and it works again. And now, here on the hard, I notice the same problem. So it, it just can't be right. And what we found out is when they put back the steering pedestal, one part they <laughs> place it back upside down. So that's really the issue. So the entire shaft could move upwards. A little bit. So over time it moved upward, 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 and then with a slam or something tick, was just enough. And there was no uh, connection anymore between the steering wheel and the steering quadrant. So we took it off, we flipped it over, put it back on, and now hopefully this is the last time I have to open up this stupid steering pedestal. So after three days on the hard, it's time to get back 
in the water. We are being splashed in in a moment. Um, major thing we did was the cleaning the hole and um, put prop speed around our propeller. Galapagos has very strict rules and regulations for cruisers to enter their waters. One of them is that you are not allowed in when there is any growth underneath the boat. On your arrival, a diver will check your hull and if you have any fouling, they will send you 40 nautical miles out at sea to clean the hull. That's the main reason for us to apply another layer of coat and new prop speed. steering <laughs> and still busy um, so we told you that the part was actually installed upside down uh, let me show you we installed it the right way now so this has to be on top and this prevents the bearing coming up and there's in the shaft uh, there's an edge as well, so this entire shaft now is not able to move upwards anymore when the bolt is tightened and everything is put back together. So now um, the shaft is not able to move up anymore when of course the bolt is in place as well. But we seem to miss some, miss some shim rings. Um, shim rings are like um, metal bronze or nylon rings that uh, are like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 millimeter thick and you can add them to each other to just gain that little bit more height um, I noticed when I put this lid on with the small teeth it was a too tight fit and the steering became very very heavy a homemade shimmering it's very thin and it's just made out of an old yogurt lid and a cream cheese lid this is exactly the thickness we need and um, yeah we put that in we have three of them we put them on top it doesn't need to fit fit very correctly but this just gives us the height that we need. One more week to go um, here in Shells Bay Marina and then we are going for the uh, well a big adventure for us I think to the channel to the Pacific side on the Pacific side we are probably stay one week to provision on food and then we will leave uh, this is because the marina on the other side on the Pacific Oceans they are way more expensive than the marinas here on the Atlantic side of the ocean of Panama so that means that we do all our preparation for the big ocean crossing here um, what needs to be done um, we will go up the mast again uh, we had a rigger that has checked everything but that was a couple of months ago and we want to check if everything is still all right there We just uh, made the setup ready to hoist me into the mast so um, I can inspect at the mast.
so good. So slowly I'm going down to check on chafing of the line. So I have the spinnaker sheet here and I'm just checking for shaving. Mast inspection done. No shaving, no nothing. So that's good. We're good to go almost. Morning. Good morning. What are we going to do, Liz? Fish the bear rabbit. <laughs> We're going to search for how the monkeys. For how the monkeys. So that's the first. Put on socks. Yes! You, you can see Liz has the, <laughs> It's been a while for Liz. Do you know how it, uh, Do you know how to put them on, Liz? Mm. Yes, almost there! Our fashionista decided it's out of fashion already. Not soon. Not How far have we gone? <laughs> 200 meters. What did you see? When building the Panamanian channel, hundreds of people died because of venomous snakes and poisonous animals in the Panamanian forest and we are walking through the same forest right now. Did we see anything, Kim? Yes, monkeys. And? Birds. And... Forest rabbits. A fo forest rabbit? <laughs> a forest rabbit. I don't know how it's But called. no howler monkeys. No. No to come. No, no, I didn't expect it to come. I've given up on the to come. Our final day before our transit in Shelter Bay Marina. We have all the equipment on board to transit the channel, but are still waiting for our new Genoa. We are in luck. It just arrived and we still have a few hours left, so time to install the head sail. ordered the exact same Genoa we have now and uh, that is because we are facing some serious passages uh, one big passage and then a lot of uh, multiple day passages all downwind and we wanted to have or go for a twin headsail setup uh, so it's gonna be either the parasailer in light winds and then the twin headsail setup when there is a little bit more wind, so the mainsail probably stays down all the time.
We do not have an extra force day, but we have two slots, so we can hoist two sails on one furler and we can roll them in together. So we might need to beef up the... I think it will fit. But why the effort? Why don't we want to sail with our mainsail anymore? Well, that's because... We have our spreaders in the mast and on our boat they point aft very much because our boat is not a typical uh, cruiser boat, blue water sail boat. Um, it's more designed to sail upwind uh, and beam reach but not very good of a downwind sailor. So that means if we open up the mainsail um, it's we, we cannot open it very much because then it touches the spreader so this is why we put the patches on the side of the spreaders for the Atlantic Ocean crossing uh, and they're still on there now but still we don't feel it's the way to go for longer passages downwind um, because if we need to reef our mainsail one of us has to go forward for the third reef so that means we always need two persons to uh, set the reef so if that's in the night Kim would wake me up or I would wake up Kim because we don't go forward by ourselves in the night and to prevent going forward we reef early so that means we reef one reef extra just to be careful just to be, just as a precaution uh, for the night so we don't have to wake each other up to put in that reef if we don't use the mainsail and just have the twin head sails up we can easily roll in both genoas and make the sail area smaller so that can be done from a from our cockpit that means that kim can do it on her on her own i can do it on my own we don't have to wake each other up um, and it also means we can let out a little bit more sail than normal because you can easily reef during the night so overall your passage time your average speed would probably increase a little bit not that it's all about speed but hey if you can't take that crossing and make it one day shorter that's the way to go so yeah that's why we are going to try out this twin head sail setup and uh, yeah of course we will let you know all about it and how it works out um, I think the first time uh, trying it will be when we leave Panama City to the Galapagos Islands now we are all set and ready for our transit this night we will leave for the Pacific side well this was it if you have any questions please let us know and for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.
Our idea behind this new setup is that in the Pacific we will be sailing downwind and our boat performs just better with headwinds. So that's why we now have two twin headsails, which also reef easier.